Thanks, David and uh, uh, Danny and Eva um, for uh, for that uh, warm welcome. Uh, can I begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we gather and pay my respects uh, to their elders past and present. Um, just a few acknowledgements to start off with before I uh, uh, get into the spiel. Uh, of course, my parliamentary colleagues at the state and federal level, uh, Damien, Wendy and uh, Susanna. Um, lovely to see you here. The Deputy Mayor, uh, Shelley, uh, thank you for uh, uh, for being here as well. Um, to our hosts, uh, the Keating family, uh, Ken in particular, thank you very much for uh, having us here today. Um, to uh, uh, Ken Murray uh, and all of the kids from Wanganui Park uh, Secondary College, thank you for being here. Uh, Joe and David and Kerry from Shep Villages, um, and of course, uh, uh, David Earl uh, and the mighty work that, uh, that Ravery do um, right around the country, but uh, particularly here in Shepherd. And, uh, thank you. As David said, this project here in, uh, uh, was the, the only project that uh, uh, got the support uh, and the votes through the Pick My Project uh, uh, exercise last year. You might recall that the state government announced um, uh, an allocation of money um, and said, well, listen, rather than some shiny bum pol uh, public <laughs> servant down in Melbourne picking the projects, why don't we allow the community to, uh, to decide um, of the projects that are being advanced at the local level, which ones they would like. And I wish I'd asked who was selected here in, uh, uh, in Shepparton. And I think that says uh, a lot about the, uh, uh, the project. And I was very, very fortunate to be able to join Danny and Eva and David and, um, uh, and everybody out at Shep Village uh, when, the, uh, when the project was announced um, uh, last year and the residents uh, of, uh, of Shep Village and they were genuinely excited about the, uh, the prospect. Um, strip everything back, what's this project designed to do? And it's designed to tackle the loneliness in, uh, in the aged community. 70% of the aged community today say that they experience loneliness of some sort. 30% of our kids say that they interact sometimes with people uh, uh, in the aged community. So imagine if we have, through this sort of project, the capacity to reverse those numbers. What a wonderful endeavour uh, uh, it is. And also made the point when, um, when we gathered last year at the announcement of the project that uh, um, I wish I'd asked. Uh, both of my parents uh, have, uh, have passed on and um, there are so many things that I uh, didn't get to uh, ask them. Uh, and you know it's often the questions that you think about after the event and of course you don't get that opportunity to go back uh, and uh, and ask those things so um, uh, I'm not sure who's that was but uh, anyway <laughs> um, uh, no. so um, so I thought about this project and when it, uh, when it appeared on the list and I thought Gee, I can't come out and be parochial in terms of uh, which of the projects that I'd support, but uh, uh, if I did, it would have been uh, this one, because I think at its core, um, the thing that it is trying to do of connecting young people with old people and uh, uh, ensuring that the stories, the experiences are passed on from generation to generation, but importantly, the educational opportunities that it brings as well. I know that the... Uh, uh, the kids here today, um, and through uh, things like the uh, the van, they'll be passing on things like technology skills to uh, uh, people in their communities. They might sit around the piano and have a sing along. There's a variety of different things that uh, uh, that they'll be sharing in, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful project. And you think about all of the things that go on in the world, um, the opportunity for young and old to reconnect um, to uh, to the betterment. Of, uh, of all concerned is just a wonderful thing. This project will always have my personal support. Um, I think it's uh, uh, it's one of the more noble things that I've ever been involved with. Um, and I'm working closely with uh, with Danny and Eva. They're coming down to uh, Spring Street, I think, in a couple of weeks. Um, uh, so uh, uh, probably for a uh, for a free uh, free scone and uh, jam and cream. Mark, what's the dress code in Spring Street? <laughs> well. It's funny, you know, when I got dressed this morning, I thought, well, I'll put, I'm going to be a bit bold. You know, I know Danny's there, and I, I'm going to put on the uh, uh, the bone jacket. I'll outdo him. But, of course, you know, 
just when you think you've got Danny Finley uh, uh, pegged, um, he, he comes out with something more extraordinary. Uh, the other thing, of course, I want to do in two weeks when I come to uh, Spring Street is work out which political side each of you are on. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get to the bottom of that. That's oh, a secret, is it? So, but really, um, uh, I am very uh, uh, thrilled to be here today um, to see the next step in this very, very important project. Um, again, I want to thank the Keating family for hosting us here. Uh, uh, without the support of uh, organisations like Keating Transport, the local community getting involved, these projects wouldn't be success, uh, uh, successful. And I'm confident that this, uh, uh, this project will be very successful. I also want to just say that we often talk about money with these projects, and I just want to say that everybody is very clear, this is a not-for-profit organisation. They don't make any money. There's no profit for these people. They're not drawing out, uh, you know, uh, uh, some excess for their retirement fund. Uh, that's not what's going on. All of the money that uh, is raised uh, for IWIA is ploughed back into uh, uh, the organisation for the betterment of uh, uh, the age community uh, uh, in this state. So thank you again, David, Danny and Eva, and everybody concerned, and I look forward to uh, a successful day.